All right, let's do a, a photo carve real quick. Um, just follow my mouse and my uh, voice. We'll go from here. Basically, uh, I'll hold down the shift key, click on file. While I'm holding down shift, I will open up a new project. I'll leave mine at full size. This is what I carve with on uh, my Onefinity. But uh, the shift button, what that allows me to do is get in here and get even more resolution. My computer can handle it. It's up to you. I'll hit OK. I'll come up here, import a bitmap. So we'll just go back with one I've already done, one that you guys are asking about. Go ahead and open that up. I bring mine down into the corner. That's where I'll um, probe from. So I'll, I'm going to make this. For my project, I'm going to do 24 inches tall. You can do whatever it is you want to work with. Um, after I get my size, I won't mess with the picture. We're good to go. I'll, the next step is to make a box. I'll draw a rectangle around the entire picture. So we got the, we got the rectangle. Go ahead and close this out. Then I'll go over to my vector texture. So while the rectangle is selected, go to vector texture, come in here. Uh, this is where you're going to make your waves. The most important thing for me is I put the noise down to zero. I have zero noise on here. So zero. Um, and these numbers here, you'll mess around with your angle of the waves, the space in between. Um, that you'll play around with. This tends to be a number I roughly I, I like to work with and variation. I'll show you that here in a second here. Amplitude is how tall the waves are, and the wavelength is the distance between the peaks of these waves. So you'll see. You can play around with that. So let's just go ahead and do a preview. Uh, you can name yours whatever. I just named mine waves. So you'll see here the waves have been generated. I'll zoom in. You'll see they're pretty even. You know, they're even there. I'm not going to mess with the amplitude or the wavelength right now. Um, Typically, I'd be pretty happy with this, but I'm going to show you guys what the variation does. So the variation, I'll just go ahead and do this over here, and we'll preview it. And you'll see now we went from some very uh, even lines to having some that are closer and thinner and farther apart. Um, this you kind of want to mess around with, depending on the bit. I run a 60-degree V-bit. Um, if you want to get them really close, you're going to need to probably run a 30-degree or a 15-degree 20 degree bit uh, to get in here in some of these tight spots. Uh, the closer these lines are together, the shallower you'll get, which means you won't get a lot of color or a lot of shade, right? The dark color. So I'm going to go ahead and move this back to roughly where I typically have it. I don't get too crazy there. Every once in a while I do. Um, so I'm pretty good with this. This is a pretty even spacing in between. We're good here. But we'll go ahead and hit OK. Um, Go over to the toolpaths, and we're going to end up going with the photo card. But just remember, you're going to have to select, just like you do for any other one, select your, your vectors and your bitmap. So let's go ahead and center this. I got them both selected. Go to photo carve. I, I run max depth, usually about 07.07 07, um, with a 60 degree V bit. And since we're going on the waves, we're going to go, we're going to use the selected vector that we have. And so I'm not going to rename it. I'm just going to go ahead and hit calculate. But here's my settings, 0 0.07 on my machine. Um, with my tool, feeds and speeds will depend on your machine. And I'll go ahead and calculate that. Once it's calculating here, we're done. We can zoom in here. I'm going to recenter it. If it wants to go back to default, I'll go ahead and preview it. It shows you here what, uh, what it's going to do. I feel pretty good about that. You can see we got some good highlights. Definitely some uh, difference between the background and the foreground here. We're good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let's see what, let's go ahead and close this out. Let's take a look at what our uh, estimated time is going to be. So on this curve here, about 24 inches tall, I would say roughly about, what, 16, no, that's about 17 and a half, 18 inches wide. Um, you're looking at about 40, 40 minutes, roughly. And this is, these are my settings. But it goes pretty quick. So I'll close this out. I'll go ahead and save it. 
it's one tool path, so it doesn't nothing crazy. I, I run on a Journeyman uh, X50 from Onefinity, and uh, there you have it. That's it. Uh, process after um, carving is I like to seal it, uh, pull it off the machine. I'll seal it with some slack. Um, well, cut it out. I, I cut it out on the table saw real quick and easy. I'll slack it, get a good coat of slack, let it dry for about 10 minutes, come back with some black spray paint. doesn't need to be expensive, just some cheap stuff or dark color, something of a dark color, dark gray, dark brown, walnut brown, um, spray paint of your choice. Darker the better, uh, just so you can get some of the, you get the highlights. Um, after your spray paint, let it dry overnight, that's what I do. Sand it the next morning or next day, I'll sand it. I'll start off with an 80 grit. I would probably suggest you start off maybe like with a 120 until you understand like what you're trying to, what you're trying to achieve. Um, and I'll do another video on that, on the sanding part. Um, but basically, sand it. Uh, you want all the paint off of the highlighted area. So any, anywhere here that you see is wood wood color, you want that to be wood color after you sand. And the paint stays in those grooves. Uh, I'll move up from an 80 grit to a 120, and then kind of clean it up at the end with a 220 in some of the areas that are a little more fine. Uh, it's the sanding part is just really about feel uh, you'll see and uh, you'll want to blow off all the sand all the sand all the dust that's in the grooves that'll give you that'll reveal what's really behind because uh, as you're sanding paint will get stuck inside or sorry um, sand or uh, ah, lost for words um, sawdust will get into these grooves here and clog them and then you can just blow them off with compressed air air compressor, a wire brush, whatever it is you need to do, and uh, you'll have a, a good car. That's, I mean, that's how, that's how quick and easy it is. Any questions, uh, drop me a line. Thanks.